people are gonna win. As long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. Never gonna lose, never gonna win. As long as you're happy, you're always gonna grin. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. You get out what you put in. I didn't see you dancing to the song, Lucy. How are you? Are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, where's Dermot? He disappeared. Oh my goodness. Where's, where's Dermot? He gone? See if we see if we can get him. Hang on a second. I'm here. Let's I'm here. I'm here. Oh, hey. Where are you? Where are you? Sorry. Being very troubled. So that was that was not down to me. I can't claim the glory for that particular mistake. The the ones which nobody's seen for the last fifteen minutes are all down to me, but that one wasn't. So um, I'm here and ready to go, Ashley and Lucy. Of course. You're, you're coming. You're coming live from a Countex North, eh? Live from a Countex North, uh, indeed. Hi. I'm here in uh, in a pleasant pleasant day in Manchester. I'm delighted to say. So I've just popped outside the hall. It's um, busy show. Got a good buzz about it. Uh, some familiar faces that we'll all all know and love, and I'm pleased to say one or two new ones. And unfortunately for me, I am in a um, Corporately branded T-shirt, which I did my there's best to nothing, get out of. There's nothing wrong with corporately branded T-shirts. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but oh, but you brand. have a nice you have a nice slim figure to go inside said corporate branded T-shirt. <laughs> I I have a pleasantly plump and cuddly warm. Um, built for the energy crisis we're all about to go into. So. <laughs> built for comfort, Dermot. Built for comfort. Built for comfort. Definitely not for speed. So, yes, I'm doing my best to to be slim, but um, failing miserably because the allure, as anyone who's worked with me, like Ashley has, knows that the mere mention of a sausage sandwich, cupcake, <laughs> a Cornish pasty, means I'm immediately succumbed to that invitation. Like a moth to the flame. Sounds indeed. Indeed. So, indeed. Guys, pleasant, pleasantly plump. Welcome back, Lucy. Welcome back, Dermot. You came on a, a couple of months ago because you had this amazing event of uh, coming, and um, it's been and gone. Um, we, we had a, a little bit of an upset with the royal with, with the royal news. Um, so, so tell us, how did it go, guys? Oh, so it was um, it was very exciting. So we uh, we did deliver. We because of the Queen's passing, which was on the, obviously the funeral was on the nineteenth. And the event was taking place 21, 22. Uh, we actually took it virtual, which meant we had um, a few interesting conversations with the hotel, which um, seemed to think that um, that wouldn't have affected uh, anything, and we should uh, should have still been there um, in face to face. So um, the hotel itself could have been a bit more accommodating, but in terms of the actual event, then the content delivered by uh, Lucy and the other speakers, um, you know, so Steve Cunningham, Brian Coventry, uh, Alexandra bond Burnett, Richard Bruin was absolutely top notch and certainly hit the spot in terms of what we wanted to uh, achieve. You know, we wanted to, yes, have a few familiar faces such as, you know, Lucy, who, you know, we only gave, um, you know, one speaking slot to. I know Lucy only normally insists on four speaking slots before she goes to a conference. Don't get out of bed for less than four, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Quite right too. Quite right too. The levels you're at, but um, but no, the content that was delivered was great. We had great feedback from the attendees. Um, as I've said to other people, the uh, attendee numbers were low, but having taken some uh, advice and counsel from our good mutual friend Zoe Lacey Cooper, who of course uh, grew Accountex to the size that it is now, and um, Caroline, who obviously has taken it on from. Uh, Zoe and uh, maintained that that growth then they both advised me that year one is a lot of a hard slog for not massive uh, return and indeed those two wise ladies ladies um, spoke very wisely because that was indeed the effect but but you know we're happy for it we uh, we build a brand we got it off and running you know part of the reason for doing it was because too many people sit there and say you know isn't the world gray and what can we what we can what are we going to do to change it and end up doing nothing so myself and Richard after having that conversation a couple of times kind of looked at one another and said you know we can't repeat this conversation ad nauseum otherwise we're never going to do anything we'll be retired so so we had a pop we got it off and running and we'll continue to uh, continue to do it Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to put you. On, I'm going to put you on mute a minute, Dermot, because there's a there's an awful lot of um, everyone enjoying themselves. Lucy, are you? Are you yeah, that's quite that, that, that's 
that's quite enough from Dermot, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Keep him on mute. <laughs> <laughs> but but I, I, don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm really feeling FOMO. I don't know, I, I don't know if you can wander around and, and, and it would be nice to see Zoe. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if anyone's there or, or, or who else who else did you want to see, Lucy? Maybe Dermot could go and find them for us. Yeah, let's send him like challenge Annika. Let's send him running around in a in a unitard and see what he can uh, see what he can find. That um, would that would be funny. Yeah, I am on a bit of FOMO, so I'm not going up to um uh, Manchester. Obviously I'm not there. Here I am in my office. Um it was a couple of reasons. Firstly, Manchester is a proper schlep from where I am in Swansea. So um it's gotta be worthwhile. Um, and I've done quite a lot of speaking this year in person events, and I'm up to the Accounting Web Live Expo 30th and of November, 1st of December. So I, I'm do this isn't a plug, but I'm doing a lot up there, and just I just need to be quite um, careful with my energy. You can't do it all. Sometimes you know my favourite word boundaries. Sometimes you've got to you've got to say no to stuff. And alongside that, we've got a really busy time in the business. I said we've just taken on eight sales team. So um, eight, we're all eight, eight sales in Lucy. one go. Wow. It's, it's having, been a sales, having been a sales guy <laughs> and Dermot's managed sales guys like me. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very much feeling that vibe, to be honest, um, Ashley. Yeah, so it was just a lot. We've got a lot going on. And I just, um, my team need me here at the moment. Um, so that's, yeah, that was the decision there, really. But I am massively getting FOMO watching Derma amble around and see people. Um, yeah, I'm a bit jealous, to be honest. Yeah. All those hugs, <laughs> all those high fives, all those catching up with yeah. people. So, so um, you, you, Dermot just said what an amazing um, delivery you did at, at, at this uh, event. Um, how did it go? What are your thoughts um, as, as, a, as a practitioner as well? Yeah, so I, for me, I think it was... What it was always supposed to be, what, what it was always going to deliver was a more intimate experience than the kind of large scale events you go to where you're one in a crowd of 100 and you like, kind of like, like the one Dermot's at now. <laughs> yeah, and you know, they're, they're all great. You know, they, they all serve their purpose. But I think in terms of that kind of intimacy and having access to the speakers, um, I think that's what it really delivered. And it allowed when you also as a speaker, when you're in that environment, the way that you present is slightly different. It's much more conversational. You're, I'm not up on stage waving my arms around and leaping about. I'm, I, I'm engaging with people. I'm taking one-to-one -one questions. I'm kind of adding real value there. Not that I don't add value on the big stage, but I think it's, a, it's just a different experience. And that's, for me, the kind of gold in it is that you don't often get access to that set of experts boldly classing myself as an expert but you don't often get access to that and be able to to, to take away all, all of those kind of nuggets of information um in a controlled environment you know I'll, I'll chat to people when I come off the stage usually and it's usually a walk and talk because I'm like right I've got five minutes come with me to the next place I'm going and chat to me at the time and then that's it and it's quite kind of frenetic with uh this sort of with this style of conference um it wasn't that it was much more intimate there was a time to talk there's a time to counsel and i thought that was really valuable i really liked that yeah i love i love the, the time to counsel how, how did you manage to um, get that into the, the mix that, um... oh have you unmuted me now yeah i have oh thank you um so in terms of getting that in it was um it was just the facilitation uh, aspect which you know myself I, I was the principal facilitator for most of the uh, sessions um, and it was just making sure that I think when you're in this uh, zoom environment especially when you've got uh, you know a few people are involved in the session it's making sure that you're giving people the opportunity to contribute which you know on one hand you're giving them the opportunity to contribute but you're also um, trying to keep them on the toes and making sure that they're, they're aware that you are going to come to them and therefore they they are engaged with the whole process so it, it, you know whilst it wasn't big brother it was it was twofold really by by taking that approach we we made sure that they were all uh, all engaged and um when they were given the opportunity to question confirm or um, you know have another uh, deeper understanding of you know what the speakers were talking about then um you know they um they took the opportunity, so I think it worked pretty well. Oh, fantastic! And so, what what are the key takeaways? I'll come to Dermot first, and then and then I'll come to Lucy. What are the key takeaways that the delegates got from this amazing event? Okay, so I think for me, it's um, 
if, if I choose Steve Cunningham as just one of the speakers, then um, just to very briefly praise so Steve went blind at the age of 12. Uh, he kind of went off the rails uh, to a certain degree for a couple of years, which is not um, completely unexpected. But then when he got poked in the chest by a professional footballer called John Burridge at Aston Villa, he um, got an incredible level of motivation and uh, subsequently uh, run a very successful business. He played football for the England blind team. He's currently learning how to play golf, and I think his handicap is about 14. He's flown around uh, Lake Windermere, uh, you know, in a plane on his own. And he's sorry, he's flown around the circumference of the UK on his own in a plane, and he's driven a boat across Lake Windermere faster than anybody, uh, any other blind man. So, and Steve's whole kind of approach is, you know, I'm not special, and if I can do it. Um, you can. Um, when, and so it's really quite stage, message. When someone's up on stage saying that, it's not like, think, right, I've got two eyes, I've got no excuse, have I? That is, that is, that is inspirational, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, as he says, look, I'm not special. He said, I, you know, I just happened to have, and he had his dog Qantas there, which, of course, uh, easy way to get people on his side is to, uh, you know, have, have, have the guy, the, the blind dog there, which you're obviously heavily involved dog. with, Ashley. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They're guide dogs, not blind dogs, don't they? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you're quite right to pick me up. I, I Hopefully people got the picture I was trying no, to paint, every, but you're quite every, right. Everybody that comes up to me, is it a deaf dog or a blind dog? I said, it's neither. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> they really wouldn't be much help. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that so would be quite entertaining, wouldn't it? Mm. When, when you've got someone kicking off a, an event like that, that really sets the tone for the whole event. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mute you again, um, Dermot. Lucy, so what was your uh, takeaway then from the, from the event? Yeah, so a, a different experience, obviously, as a speaker at it, in that um, I, my sense of it is more about how I felt people responded to it. And my kind of overall overarching um, feedback from it really was that they got, that real value and like Dermot said that inspiration so when it is that more intimate setting I think the speakers are being a little bit more vulnerable you know we're putting ourselves out there a little bit more we're bearing a little bit more of our souls and I'm always the first to admit every mistake I've ever made and talk openly about it but you can do that in that more intimate setting and I think that people really like that it's that case of going not just with you know, Steve looking at that and going wow you know he's got a physical impairment and is able to achieve all the stuff, but also to look at people who you might perceive to be successful and have them go, I've made loads of mistakes or I've done all these things wrong and this is how I fix it. And I'm probably still gonna make a bunch load more mistakes, but it doesn't mean you're not gonna be successful. That's all part of becoming successful is failing forward and all that stuff. So I think what's really valuable there is in an age of social media, where it's very easy to post this highlight reel and you look at LinkedIn and I have people message me. So you post stuff up on LinkedIn and people message me going, oh my gosh, you're smashing it at the moment. And a lot of the time I'm like, thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say so, but I wish I felt like it because I've got so much other stuff that's going on that I feel like I'm not doing brilliantly that actually it's, it's great to celebrate the wins, but it's also really important to remember that everyone's got stuff that they feel and they're not succeeding at at the moment. And it's very rare that someone who looks like they're smashing it on LinkedIn or wherever actually feels like that or actually is to the extent that you think they are. So I think it, it speaks to that really and allowing delegates or attendees to not just, because it feels a little bit um, false to have somebody who, who you might perceive as successful to go on LinkedIn going, oh, we've all got our problems, blah, 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 blah. But when they're actually there with you in the room, face to face, as it were, and they're going, oh, this thing was a blooming nightmare. Like, you wouldn't believe what happened here. Or like I just said to you off air, Ashley, like I'm about to make a potentially very expensive mistake here. You know, it, it's a dis different experience. So that's the sort of um, feedback that I think is is kind of really valuable. Yeah. And, and I, th I think if, if we're having those conversations, if, if we go to a big event and the speaker's up on stage, they're, they're up on stage, they're bigger, they're huge. Mm -hmm. But if you're in an intimate se setting, oh my goodness, you're just like me. Yeah, you absolutely. You are just like me, and and and, and like you said, I think I think that 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 is a great thing for an an, an event. So uh, no, it's, it's great, and it's great that you can share that because everybody they they look up to you know people like yourselves and think, oh my goodness, they must be able to walk on water and what have you. They they can't see what's going on behind. They you know you're like you, you know we're all like swans. 
yeah, look elegant. Absolutely. But underneath, we are thrashing around. So, so it's all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it's and it's not just the professional stuff. We've all got. I've got a blooming leak going on downstairs somewhere, which has caused me stress. And just these things sit in your head. You've got all yeah, life yeah. stuff, and then people have got families and dogs and pets and friends and dramas and all this stuff and it's all kind of built up and it's very rare that you well I mean we couldn't share it all otherwise it'd be this constant noise you have to pick the stuff you share but in a more intimate setting you get an opportunity to get a sense of somebody and it's not this kind of shiny glossy curated version of somebody it very much is warts and all and that I think is super valuable because that's the, that's the stuff I find really inspiring when I see it in other people. I look at them. It's great to see the successes, but it's also great to see how they've recovered from the difficult stuff and the challenges. And that's the stuff where I'm like, yeah, that I that resonates. It's not just me. It's like when you chat to other practice owners. So I chat to other practice owners at the time. Practices are much bigger than mine. And we chat about uh, what's going on, what the problems are, things like that. And it's so comforting to hear that everyone has the same problems <laughs> and it's so you know, recruitment cash retention ch- all this stuff the right toilet it's, paper all that stuff it's so comforting and you sit there and you go oh thank goodness it's not just me yeah, and it doesn't make the problem go away but at least you know it's kind of ubiquitous you know yeah yeah absolutely um don't, don't let's ever so quiet there <laughs> keep him on mute <laughs> No, I'm on you, that's why. It's unfair, it really is unfair, because Dermot's always got something to chip in, which is always good. Um, so Dermot, I've got a big question for you. Are we doing it again in 2023? Yes, of course we are. Excellent news, excellent news. And do we have dates yet? Uh, not yet, no, it will be similar kind of time span, so September, October. What I do want to do is um, just see what other events are taking place, uh, you know, around the same time we've had AccountX North, um, Tag, and uh, there's a few other ones, you know, kicking around. So we just try and uh, get a sensible date, um, and then we will, uh, yeah, plough on, plough on like a good farmer, and um, deliver an even better show next year. Fantastic. And are you building this into a community, or, or is that, that, that for the future? That will uh, come along in some time. So I think we need to uh, deliver a few. We've actually got a webinar coming up on um, 27th uh, of October, uh, 10 o'clock with Joe Edwards. Um, so talking about personal brand. So there'll be a regular stream of, um, you know, webinars coming on, coming along with you. Can anyone watch that or do you have to? No, no, no. That, that, these will all be open. I don't think we'll be in any, um, uh, any kind of closed community until, the, uh, until next year. So February 20th. Fantastic. So when you get five minutes, if you put the link for that in, in this at the end, then anybody watching this, um, a, a lot of people are going to watch this on replay because they're up there with you. Um, then they'll be able to go in and get that and get that link. So, yeah, that's that's great. And, yeah, uh, very kind. Uh, and please nudge me, Ashley, if I don't do that uh, by tomorrow morning. No, don't, don't worry. Well, I know you're going to be busy today. I know, I know you're going to be busy yeah. today. Um, so I had a question for you, Lucy. I was chatting with somebody earlier and... This, this 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 will resonate with you. I'm sorry, I'm going to put you on mute again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I, I hate doing this. I, I promise you. you I, I hate doing this. Um, uh, so I'm talking to somebody at the moment, and they're doing some stuff on LinkedIn mm-hmm. and and other platforms, and th- they're they're getting anxiety about the fame. Oh okay. right. Okay. Okay. And and so. You know, when you say the the name Lucy Cohen, everybody knows you. All right, they know which, that you're going to. Which, for the record, I find bizarre. Like that, that's bizarre. It's wild. But but yeah, and and so so this person is sort of like nowhere near your your elevated status, but is getting a bit more interest on LinkedIn. Excellent, okay? cool. Yeah, and I said, oh, you need to do this now, obviously, because I'm, yeah. I'm, that's what I do. Like, yeah. Right, you need to do this, and you need to do that, and then do. Oh, I can't, oh, I'm, I'm worried about the fame and, and, and all of that. What if I upset somebody and stuff mm-hmm. like that? So so what's your advice if somebody is in that position, please, Lucy? Yeah, it's a really good question, Ashley. And the, the fame, that's hilarious. I feel like I'm Lady Gaga. This is great. Um, <laughs> it is uh, the fame Ooh, thing. La, la, la. <laughs> I <Sorry>. think the, <laughs> you carry on. Um, I think the fame thing 
if you want to call it that loosely, or the notoriety or being known or whatever it is, uh, it's a byproduct of you being good at what you do and authentic. So first of all, it's your motivation for doing it. If you just want to go out there and be famous, like a Big Brother contestant or someone applies to be on a celebrity show and they want to be famous for the sake of being famous, your motivations are probably wrong because that will get you so far, but it, you'll be you'll be a fast burn. I've been doing this for over 16 years, so it's plugging away. This isn't a short term thing. I mean, granted, I'm you know, getting on a bit now. So when I started, social media wasn't really a thing. LinkedIn was just taking off all that kind of stuff. I know I, you can't tell from my youthful complexion, but all, social media, the world has very much changed since I started my firm and the LinkedIn kind of uh, fame and, and audience and stuff has really grown for me probably in the last five years uh, predominantly, because that's, I think for everybody when it's kind of taken off, uh, we've always played with PR. We've always played with being a little bit sassy, a little bit cheeky. And I, I quite that like video. that. Yeah. I always, I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. The main advice really is, is that as long as you can sleep at night, so you're putting out there whatever is authentically you and whatever feels right for you and sits correctly in your soul. And you have to accept that some people aren't going to agree with you and don't like it. And you have to make the decision and own the power in that. And you can't control what other people think, say and feel, but you can control how you respond to it. So you have the power and the choice in how to respond to it. If you're going to take the praise and let that lift you up, then you have to um, decide what you're going to do with the negative stuff. So the, for me, the, the, when I get credit or praise, something is lovely, but it doesn't define my self-worth because my self-worth is defined by myself. So whether I get praise externally or not, it's not a validating factor for me. I do a, I do a lot of work on myself to make sure that I'm validating myself. As long as you're doing that, you're being authentic and true to who you are and what you're com what you're posting about you're comfortable with. If you get a bit of notoriety or fame off the back of it, so be it. Great. If you don't, but you're continuing to give out the right message to the right audience and getting the responses you need, also great. But I wouldn't worry too much about the detractors or people being negative as long as you are comfortable with what you've said and how you've behaved. And that's all that matters, really, is that you can go to bed at night going... I was the best version of me and I believe in it. And also, do you know what? If you have a moment where you're not the best version of you, you own it, you either apologize for it or you make amends and you go, I'm not going to beat myself up on it forever because we are all human and sometimes we all have bad days. Uh, and then you move on and you don't let that define you either. Love it. And Kim agrees. Kim agrees. That is incredible advice. Thank you, Lucy. Uh, I knew you'd be the best person to ask. And Kim, <laughs> Kim, Kim's all, already booked her ticket for next year, Dermot. Excellent. <laughs> she's, she's, looking, she's looking forward to that. So that, that's absolutely superb news. Um, right. So I, I, I'm going to let you guys go. Um, I just want a couple of quick words before you disappear. So Dermot, you're up first. Thanks so much for, for um, not having a, a, a sausage sandwich and a cupcake and just coming to say hello. Uh, lovely to see you. Uh, any any parting words for everybody before you disappear, sir? Oh, just enjoy the day. And, uh, just uh, yeah, just those words which Lucy talked about. Um, just just in her final um, question there about knowing your self worth and not getting upset just because somebody that you've never heard, never going to meet, don't even know what it looks like. Why why on earth are you going to get upset by the nonsense that they post on social media? So yeah. No, well, thank, thanks. For Wise words again well. from uh, from Lucy. Wise words. It's, from Lucy. it's it's great, isn't it? Lucy, have you got any parting words before we disappear? Yeah, I'm going to echo that thing. Really, is that find your find your mentors in the right places. So find your mentors uh, and work with people who align with your belief systems, and then you're going to be on the right path. And again, for me, authenticity always. And if you can sleep at night, you're doing it right. No, super duper, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I, I've got Lucy coming back in a couple of weeks, so I can't yes. wait for that. So it's one on one. We'll have no interruptions from Dermot. Uh, yeah, no Dermot ruining it. Uh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Stand back again. Again. Let's have a look at that top again, Dermot, because it's a great colours. Great it colours. Is. Lovely. You are, sorry? But, yeah. So if anyone's just watched this, how can they find you today? What stand are you on? I am on stand. E for Echo 6 for 6, uh, E6, which literally you walk into the entrance and we're second road back. So can't miss us. Can't miss us. Unipass. Uh, 
Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you, Lucy. Thanks ever so much indeed. And we will be back next week. All the very best. Cheerio. Thanks, Ashley.